Hey, good morning. Today, well, I'm gonna show you how to build a shipping crate. Today we're shipping this wooden ball. So we're gonna work around this product. And I know it's small, but the basics are the same for a small product to a super big product. Um, so just bear with me and I'm gonna try my best to not take too long explaining this project, okay? Um, I'm gonna start with listing the materials that we're gonna need to make this crate. Starting by some soft packing and material like bubble wrap, plywood, uh, the recommendation is to use between half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Today we're using three quarters of an inch. Be sure to buy a high quality plywood like from grade A to Z to C. Um, the importance is that the higher quality plywood uses a higher quality glue for the interior of the plywood, which is a little bit more resistant when the crate is exposed to water or any other material so that the product is safe when it travels to wherever it's going. Um, you're also going to need 1x4s or 1x6 to use as framing. We refer to these pieces as battens. And we're going to need 2 inch insulation foam and some spray adhesive to glue this to your, to your inside of the box. The 2 inch insulation foam is pretty important because it's a requirement for the insurance to cover your product when shipping. Um, if you cannot find, because sometimes it's kind of hard to find uh, the, one, the two inch insulation foam, if you have issues finding the two inch, you can always glue together two one inch in order to create that two inch insulation um, inside your crate. Besides this, you're also going to need some wood glue, very important. You're going to need nails. And in this case, I'm going to use a nail gun. And some finishing materials like primer or water-based paint for the exterior of the crate. Um, two by fours if you need any skids. If, you're, uh, if the product that you're sending is pretty big and you're creating a pretty big crate, you're definitely going to need the skids in order to make it easy for transportation in, in a forklift. Uh, some stencils to put outside of the crate, like um, some arrows pointing up that says this is the top or do not flip or fragile or anything you wanna put on the outside that's pretty important depending on what you're shipping. And handles if the crate be becomes pretty big. Um, but it definitely will depend on whatever you're sending, the size, and how, how much you want to put into it. So the, step, the first step is simple soft packing and measuring your object. So you have your object, and the first step is to wrap it around bubble wrap. Um, so you want to wrap it around bubble wrap. You want it to be entirely covered and then you're going to use a little bit of blue tape or whatever tape to securely hold the bubble wrap around the product. So in this case, we have entirely covered our product in bubble wrap. Once you do this, um, you are going to create a cut list. So that's step number two. For the cut list, you're going to be working from your measurements. You're going to need to determine how much and what size of materials you're going to need. Do, doing the math ahead of time and knowing exactly what you need can limit the trips to the hardware store as well as save you money. Taking the time to work on your, on your measurements on paper is a huge step in, efficient, in efficiently constructing your crate. Do your math, okay? It's, it's pretty 
it can be a little overwhelming, but at the end of at the end of the day, it's going to be easier. It's going to make your life easier, and it's going to take you less time and less mistakes. Okay, so just take your time. Okay, so after we have successfully wrapped our product in bubble wrap, we're gonna start doing the measurement, okay? So we grab our product and we measure. And my product is four by four. We're gonna say four by four, okay? So after determining that this is four by four, we're gonna need to add two inches to this because of the bubble, but because of the insulation that we're gonna place inside the box, okay? So two plus four plus two makes a total of eight inches by eight inches, okay? So now that we know that our inside of our box needs to be eight by eight by eight, now we start doing our measurements in order to create our cutting list, okay? So by that, we're gonna, to put together the box, we need to do a butt, joint, a, a butt joint. So that will, that will make us include the thickness of the plywood, which is three quarters. So two sides make an inch and a half, okay? So we, now we know that we need two pieces, eight by eight, then we need another two pieces, eight by nine and a half, and then the bottom and the top needs to be nine and a half by nine and a half, okay? So notice how the height stays the same. It's because first we're gonna be um, gluing up the sides of the box, and then we're just gonna add the bottom and the top. So all the sides need to be the same height, yet they're not gonna be the same width because since we're doing the butt, the butt joint, we need to add the, um, the, the thickness of the plywood on both sides, okay, in order to get the right measurements. So after we cut all of our pieces, and we know which one is the side, which one is the bottom, which one is the top, then we're ready to assemble, okay? So we're gonna be referencing to our cutting list and cutting down all the six sides of, of your box. You are gonna need to fasten the perimeter of the box first, which is all the sides. Make sure you're positioning the pieces uh, cut for the width on the outside of the shorter depth, okay? So here is a a big of a visual on what a butt joint is. So the end of the small piece needs to go into the inside side of the side piece, okay? Okay, so it is very important that you have a good seal to the material to prevent the ingress of external elements like water. Um, so this is the main reason why we're gonna use wood glue. So we're gonna set this aside for a moment and we're gonna start building our box. Okay, okay once you're ready to start the glue up, we're gonna grab our eight by eight piece and one of the eight by nine and a half pieces. We're gonna put glue on one of the ends And always remember that the small, the eight by eight piece goes into the inside corner of the eight and a half inch piece, okay? So once that's in there, we're going to secure this. Well, I'm actually gonna do two sides at a time just for the sake of easier to clamp to the table. So, so 
once you have that in there, it is certainly easier to flip it around and put some nails in it. Just making sure that everything is squared up. Careful with your hands when you, whenever you're using a nail gun. Okay, so we have already glued up one of the sides, then we're going to put some glue on the other side, flip it over, and place eight by nine and a half on the other side, okay? So making sure everything is aligned, keeping your fingers away. Okay, we have finished gluing up the perimeter with successfully putting the butt joints, okay, all the way around. Um, then you just remove the excess glue and we're ready to place our bottom, okay. I'm just going to put it on the top and then I'm going to flip it over just for the sakes of making the glue up and everything easier, but Okay, so once that's in there, I'm just going to secure it. With some nails. I don't like to overwhelm my pieces with nails because, as I said before, the important thing is the glue. The nails are just putting pressure so the glue can stick and cure in place. So once we have done all that, we have successfully created the, our, our box, okay? Once we have this, we have to start putting, um, attaching our battens. So there is a little bit of, of an explanation on how the battens go. The idea behind it is, remember that the battens are here to create an extra layer so that if our product or our crate is exposed or placed in a play, or placed in somewhere that there's water, you don't want the water to come into and into the box and touch our product, okay? So, the idea is with the butt joints, we're gonna create another set of butt joints 
on the outside just to create like a Z so that the water has more trouble to get into the, the inside of a box, okay? So, wherever we did a butt joint on our box, we're gonna follow the same um, structure with the boundaries. So for example, this is our longest piece we're gonna cut the buttons in order so that we have another long piece that comes on top and creates that C form that I was saying, okay? So we're gonna have two pieces that are long and then we're gonna have the insides that are short, okay? By saying this, um, we are creating a double butt joint. And once I put it together, you're kind of gonna understand a little bit better on how we're gonna be doing this, okay? So I like to start with the same size buttons and then just attaching the longer ones. To determine the size, of these is we know that our box is nine and a half on width, right? So you're gonna need two nine and a half battens, and then since this measures three and a, three quarters of an inch, you're gonna add another one inch and a half to this piece in order for you to have extra in to create that butt joint on the ends, okay? I promise you it's not as complicated as it sounds. So remember, use glue, okay? So use glue, put the glue in here, spread it out. And then you go all the way to the bottom of the box, okay? All the way to the bottom to secure that bottom piece. So I'm gonna put that over here. And then I'm gonna flip it over. And I'm gonna put my glue over here. And you're gonna go over exactly flush with your side, okay? What I like to do here is I like to measure my other piece. Okay. And then I keep rotating. More glue. On the ends too, because you're putting this together. Okay, so once that's in there, I'm going to throw in some nails. 
just to make sure it stays wherever it is. Okay, we have successfully done with the bottom of our crate, okay? So once that is done, um, we're go I also have cut small buttons. These actually follow the same structure. So wherever um, the button comes all the way to the outside, you're gonna locate these buttons that are coming up on the outside and then the ones on the side are following the buttons on the side okay just like this so I'm gonna glue these up how to know what's the size of these guys what I did was I placed my top piece on the top right and then I know that what I want to I want to be able to remove the top easily but I want to secure the top a little bit so I want my top buttons to come either a quarter to halfway on the thickness of my top by saying that it is something like this I want my top to be on the outside coming a little bit over okay so when I remove my top you're gonna have a little bit of over batten here okay to prevent the water from coming in here so once I know that that's when I took a measurement from the bottom of my buttons to my top mat button and that is exactly how I figured out how how big I needed to make this piece okay so once I have that I'm gonna start gluing it up remember follow the buttons that you already have in there so it just makes your life easier. I just shoot one nail just to, for, it, for it not to be flying around while I'm working on it, okay? Um, Okay, so now when I place my button 
on top, you're gonna see how I achieve that proud height, okay? So now when I place my top, it goes a little bit under the top of patterns, okay? So it's easier to open and close, okay? So now I'm just gonna put some glue everywhere. Okay, we have successfully created our box. Can you see the Z that I was referring at the beginning? This is what you need to achieve, okay? So this is how your box is supposed to, to see the look um, from the outside. It's pretty, pretty firm. It becomes a little bit heavy, but this will ensure that your product is shipped safely. Okay, so now we have done this. Now we have to put the insulation in there, okay? So in order to, to put the insulation in there, I have already pre-cut mine. So my bottom piece is gonna be eight by eight. That's easy, because that's the size of my inside crate. So you're gonna cut an eight by eight piece you're gonna put it all the way to the bottom, okay? Then I'm gonna need to cut two sides. Two of the sides are gonna be exactly the same size. In this case, um, I have already cut it. Lengthwise, it's gonna be eight inches. Height, you're gonna remove the two inches of the insulation. So in this case, mine is six by eight. So you're going to go one side first, just like that, and then the other side go second. Mine is a little tight, tight is good. Okay. Side and side. Now we're gonna do the ends. Okay. So I was a little a little picky on this one. Um, I am going to place one of the sides on the bottom, right? Then I know I can. Insert my product in here. Well, not yet. I'm gonna place one of the sides, which what I did is I, I had the measurement 
And what I want to create is this. So this is my side and this is my top. So it's just easier to grab from the top, okay? You can do the, the both sides the same side, the same sides, and just make a little square piece that goes in the middle. And I have an example of that over here. So this one, all the sides are the same size. So you place your object in here, and then the top just sits on top of the product. But I kind of wanted for my top piece to be on top of the side and the product. Just the thing, you can you can play a little bit with this. For today's demo, I'm just gonna use some tape. So if you do this with your tape, these become handles. So when you put your top there, then you can just pull the handles all together to easily remove your top piece. And Something that's really important that I wanted you guys to see is, can you see I'm shaking this and my object is not moving around? That is what you want. You don't want the product to be banging around in there while it's traveling. Even if I flip it over, it's not gonna fall. It's pretty tight. That's what you want, okay? You want to ensure that the product that's in here is safe. So once you did that, you place your top again with your handles. And then once you're ready, we're just gonna place the top in here. And basically what you wanna do is, you want to um, grab a to open this easily is to grab a drill and make a pre-drill um, perforation on the corners of your box, so right on the corner. Make sure that you're drilling where there is wood on the bottom, so right on the corners, okay? So, I'm gonna do I'm going to use this to pre-drill. And by pre-drilling, what, what you do is the only thing you need to do is grab a, a screw, put it in there. And your box is secure. Make sure you secure it from all four sides. But the important thing of this is 
How, how can you open it up? If you pre-drill this halfway, if you take out the screws halfway, not all the way out, this actually becomes a handle to open up your box, okay? So once you have that secured, you have your box. Nothing is hanging around in there. Everything is safe. Then you place a stencil saying that this is the top. Maybe two arrows saying that this is the top. Don't flip over in case this is super fragile. You place fragile. Um, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, you can always come and see me.